Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. And um, this morning, I want to talk about the labyrinths of our life. And um, I first came across the labyrinth um, while working at a prominent hospital in prominent enough hospital in Michigan. And um, there was a labyrinth outside the cancer section of the hospital where cancer patients are also giving uh, pictures of labyrinth where when, while they're going through their challenges and their difficult struggles, they could trace their finger around the labyrinth and walk the labyrinth from their beds. And that would help them for some people it's for meditational purposes and for some people it's to, to redirect their focus to something else. And instead of focusing on the path and the trajectory that their life is, um, where their life is heading on and you know the different things and challenges in their lives that they now have to face and that they're not happy with uh, things that they cannot change in their lives. So the labyrinth has different meaning for different cultures. For some people, it's an ancient of spiritual practices. For some of, you, some of you this morning, you might be uncomfortable with the concept of the labyrinth. And even as I speak about it, because we tend to throw everything out um, and say they're of spiritual context because people can use different things. For some people, looking at a labyrinth is looking like a maze. You often go to the um, zoo in some places and there's a maze that you go through. The different thing with a maze is a maze as you have to figure out what path to take. But the labyrinth, it's uh, filled with twists and turns but you're just simply following the pathway around, recognizing that life has twists and turns in it and staying focused on the twists and turns on the pathway and keeping focus will get you to the direction. As I said, Lavinet's idea has found up of the symbolism in different cultures and in the Native American culture that could be likened to the medicine wheel to, for the Celts. Um, it found... Um, it could be the never ending circle to the Jewish mystics of Kabbalah. It's a tree of life for Tibetan monks. It's the mandala sand paintings. And there's so many different people and, and religions and beliefs that have different things and symbols that they use. And I'm not saying to the Christian it's the pathway to Christ. Christ walked his own labyrinth for us. He took many twists and turns when he taught it not robbery to come down and to lay down his life for us. If we keep our eyes focused, the pathway to Christ and to heaven, to the cross, always seems filled with twists and turns and lots of challenges in our pathway. But if we keep our eyes focused, meditating on Christ, we can get to our destination called heaven. If you've never walked a labyrinth before, when you come to the entrance, it looks as if you're entering a maze, as I said. However, as I said, unlike the maze, you don't have to figure out where to go. Christ has walked that pathway before for you. All you need to do is to follow the twists and turns of the path, and you will come to the center, the goal of your journey. As you walk the twists and turns of life, as you come to the center, you will recognize that if Christ is at your center, everything will be okay. Amidst the twists and the turns and the challenges you face daily, the many hiccups, the many uncertainties with each day that we come up in, that we have to navigate. I recognized yesterday even more that something that I already knew, no matter how careful you are, there's always someone to sink you in a hole. <laughs> but when Christ is at the center, I can come home, I can pray about it, and I can dump it on him. You can get the idea of how this works simply by walking your finger on the drawing of a labyrinth. If you don't have, just look it up online and you will see what a labyrinth looks like. Some people think it looks like the inner air. Some people say it looks like some different things. And I'm not going to spend time on what the symbolic labyrinth, as I said, it's used for a lot of cancer patients to help them as they reflect on their different challenges. You know, it can be difficult to be in your bed, being given bad news with no family around often sometimes. And to think about all your um things of life and to come to terms with existentialism, suddenly recognizing for some people that I am not as indispensable as I think I am. And so the labyrinth can be quite helpful for sick patients. But there's some lessons we can learn from the labyrinth. Walking the labyrinth reminds us that there are no quick or easy path to solving our problems. The trick of the labyrinth is that it just at the moment when we think we have reached the center of the labyrinth, we find ourselves back at the beginning. Yes. 
as Christians, oftentimes we feel that, yes, I've gotten through a challenge. Yes, it's behind me. Just to recognize that there is another challenge waiting us. And of course, that's exactly the situ situation with our brokenness. Just when we're right back, when we feel that we've figured it out, we, we have find ourselves whole, just when we've gotten over a heartbreak, just when we've gotten over a grief or loss, just when everything seems to be in place, we come upon the fact that we're just starting all over again because something else has come and knocked us over. When we are especially weary of the misery of being or broken or broken cells, we may feel desperate to find anything that will make us feel instantly okay. But that labyrinth subtly but insistent message is to pursue the journey that's given you. The goal is further down the path and we will get there if we keep on moving in Christ and trusting him. Walk in the labyrinth teaches us patience. I can still remember the first time I walked the labyrinth, as I said at St. Joe. I wanted what it, to know what it felt like for my patients in Walk in the Labyrinth. I gave them paper copies that they requested. And how else can you understand their journey and what they could be thinking of? I found myself at many times being numbed because of the circumstances and the challenges I was facing. And I needed a moment to unwind. Instead of going to the garden, I decided to go outside in the fresh air and just to walk around, trying to keep myself focused, trying to reground myself by dumping the things in my mind and to connect above to Jesus Christ, or to focus on the song as I slowly walked through the labyrinth, just letting go all of the things that were on my mind. If I spent five minutes in the center, I figured I could complete the total process in about 15 minutes. When I actually walked the labyrinth, I discovered that moving at a normal pace, it took me 20 minutes to navigate the many turns and twists and movements, and depending on how much time you have, you just have to simply go quickly, which defeat the purpose of the labyrinth. Like us in our lives, sometimes we go too quickly through our problems. We try to mask our brokenness and, our, and we don't like to sit in it. I was listening to one of the video presentations of my colleagues that I had to listen to for one of my class and to could, we had to do read different books on abuse. Um, and then we had to, um, um, critique, um, comment on the person, whether we'd recommend it to somebody else, what is something we could use in some parts of our lives, or whether or not we could read their books. And as I read my book, my book talk about forgiveness and understanding the necessity of forgiveness. As I listened to her book, it talked about forgiveness is absolutely not necessary. And I couldn't, could not but disagree with that point. And the point is, some of us move too slowly through, as the book that book was saying. And for my book, we were saying that some of us move too fast through things. And sometimes we have to learn to sit in it and recognize that there's not a one size fits all or a quick fix. Because of the twists and turns of the labyrinth, intentionally slow us down. They teach us one of the most vulnerable attitudes in dealing with brokenness. Patience, my friend. Patience is a slow steadiness that it takes to move one step at a time towards our goal of mending. The circuitous path of the labyrinth is a reminder that when the process of finding or hidden wholeness is taking longer than we think it should, when it feels as if we're moving away from our, or think it should, when it feels as if we're moving away from our center rather than towards it, when we feel we're moving away from Christ, our actual center, bringing us closer, it is actually bringing us closer to the center. Having patience to keep on walking mirrors the spiritual practice necessary to stay on the path to heaven. Walking the labyrinth brings us to a safe place where we can leave our, our baggages and our emotional hurt and pain on our spiritual bruises. Walking the labyrinth is a reminder of hope. Walking the labyrinth teaches us to pay attention to the processes in our lives. Walk in the labyrinth gives us physical form of, med of meditating on the word of God to add or more to different sedent to sedentary practices, reading the word of God, praying as I walk around the labyrinth. Walk in the labyrinth reminds us to seek God in prayer and fasting, that sometimes we have to go at a lower and slower pace. Walk in the labyrinth is for life, teaches us that we have many opportunities for mending. And this morning, I want to invite you to walk the labyrinth with Christ. There are many, as I said, labyrinth on different things in different religion, but the key healer of our lives is Jesus Christ. So whatever it is you're using to mending, medicine alone cannot fix it. 
pharmaceutical just leave us with more brokenness and more damaged system. I'm not saying you know, should not take your medication. Don't misquote me. All I'm saying is, even when doctor give me medicine, I have to say some prayer over it. As I often do, God take this poison from this. God make this temporary, help me to do the changes in my life that I do not get fixated on these medicine. This morning, I want to introduce you to Christ. He's the center of your labyrinth, of your, the challenges and the circles and the ups and the downs in your life. It's amazing how nothing happened by accident. Like yesterday, I was at the bus stop and I was waiting and I met one of my neighbor to my left. <laughs> and um, it's so amazing. I'm not even getting that right now because I'm running out of time. But God is amazing. God is so amazing how before I call and he knows we have a need, he provided for those needs. Our God is awesome really awesome. Sometimes we focus on the problems and we have to be intentional to dump those problems. I remind myself several times, you're not going to think about all that happened yesterday. You're going to dump this. And I'm just keep giving back to God. So walk in the labyrinth teaches us how to be disciplined, how to dump the things that we're weighing and carrying us down that we have no control over. There will always be people who have well to do well intention that leave us dumped in the middle of a problem. But keep focused on Christ. Seek him in prayer today and watch him help you to walk the difficult, navigating the difficult circumstances of your life. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your grace and your mercy upon our lives. Father, I just want to lift up our children. I want to lift up that girl who was pulling her hair and was kicked and trampled about. God, that parents can sit on the sidewalk of a school and to say, kick her in the face, do this, do that. It's appalling. And to think that People have to navigate on a change.org to get some attention for the media. No, it doesn't take that to get to the media. Post it in the right places and the right direction, the right social media, and get it out there so this type of abuse can stop and people can be accountable. Where parents get involved in children's squabbles and cause all these things unnecessary beating. I cannot imagine the headaches that child has for her braids to be pulled and for her to be kicked in the face at the parents' instruction. God, our world has gone crazy, crazy. That parents need to be locked up for what's happened to this child. There's so much racism going on in our world, Lord. Our world has gone crazy. Our children leave our homes, and we don't know what happened to them when they leave. So I'm going to lift them up this morning. I'm going to lift up the prayer list. Those who are grieving, those who are hurting, those who are struggling with different aspects. Lord, there's so many people sick, so many people sick all over. It's like every day it's a new one. It's a cycle. And people are not, I'm, I'm like, when do we get common sense? One person come and sick and we all just sit down there, no protection. And everybody gets sick. Everybody's off and then the rest of us gets stressed out. But God, I pray that common sense would prevail. So I just want to put our lives before you, God. And I just ask you, Lord, to strengthen our lives and our minds and our body. God, you see all the things I have to do. I want to lift my laptop up before you, Lord, because I need my laptop back. God, I just want to put all of our concerns and I just want to ask you to have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day. And I'm out of time. God bless.